Today's episode is sponsored by Midwest Fire. For more than 20 years, Midwest Fire has been manufacturing high-quality tankers, tanker pumpers, and fire rescue vehicles in the United States and Canada. Keeping firefighters safe while enhancing their capabilities is what they do best. To learn more, go to MidwestFire.com. This is Dave Dotson, creator of the Art of Reading Smoke program and co-author of the newly released Art of Reading Buildings book. And you're listening to the SA Matters radio show with Rich Gassaway. The SA Matters mission is simple. They want to help us see the bad things coming in time to avoid bad outcomes. Hello and welcome to episode 95 of the Situational Awareness Matters radio show. I'm your host, Rich Gassaway. The purpose of this show is to improve situational awareness and decision making for individuals and teams who work in high risk, high consequence environments. The SA Matters mission is simple to help you see the bad things coming and time to avoid bad outcomes. I'm coming to you today from Del Mar, New York, where I'm in town to deliver a situational awareness program hosted by the Ellesmere Fire Department. Thank you to Assistant Chief Bob Baldwin for hosting the program for your department and for all the departments in the region. I sincerely appreciate your support of my mission. In today's feature segment, we're going to discuss how peer pressure can impact situational awareness. But before we jump into our feature segment, I have a couple of announcements. We reached a milestone that I'm really excited about. I track the number of people who attend SA Matters tour stop programs, and in January, we surpassed the 50,000 mark for the number of first responders trained on the topics of situational awareness and high-risk decision-making. I'm feeling really darn good about that. I never would have guessed that when I started this touring around the U.S. that more than 50,000 first responders would gather to learn about situational awareness and high-risk decision-making. Oh, and I need to acknowledge those numbers also include attendees from international tour stops in Canada, Europe, Asia, and Australia. I want to tell you a story that I share occasionally at my programs. When I was doing my doctoral research on situational awareness and high-risk decision-making, I was absolutely stunned about what I was learning. I could not believe that I had made it 25 years into my career and no one had ever taught me the things that I was now learning. With all the incident command and strategy and tactics classes I had been taking, it seemed inconceivable that I could make it this far in my career and no one had taught me this stuff. Now the SA Matters Tour has been going for eight years and I'm glad to be able to share this stuff with you. I want to take a moment to thank the departments and the organizations that have hosted some of our recent Situational Awareness Matters Tour Stop events. Your efforts to bring this valuable and powerful training on situational awareness and high-risk, high-consequence decision-making to your members and others in your region are greatly appreciated. The Alaska Fire Chiefs Association Conference in Juneau, Alaska, I did three programs there. The Enfield Fire Chiefs Association in Enfield, Connecticut, where I am now, the Ellesmere Fire Department in Del Mar, New York. And by the time this program airs, I will have completed programs in Grand Rapids, Minnesota, Eveleth, Minnesota, and Lutzen, Minnesota. And, of course, where I am now in Ellesmere. If you're interested in joining us for an upcoming Situation Awareness Matters tour stop, on February 16th, I'll be at the West Metro Fire Department in Minnesota, February 17th, the Wyndham Fire Department in Minnesota, February 18th, the Tracy Fire Department in Minnesota, February 25th, the Addison Fire Department in Addison, Texas, February 26th to 28th, the NSA Winter Conference in Austin, Texas, March 1 for the Los Angeles County Fire Department Fire Officers Conference, March 3, the Howard County, Maryland Fire and Rescue Department, March 4 and 5, the Toms River Fire District Number 2 in New Jersey, March 8th, the Maryland Fire and Rescue Institute's National Fire Service Staff and Command Program, March 18th, I'll be giving the closing keynote at the Center for Public Safety Excellence Conference in Orlando, Florida, March 19th, I'll be delivering the keynote at the Minnesota State Fire School in Alexandria, 
March 21 to 25, the Company Officer Development Institute in Columbus, Indiana. March 22 in the evening, the Madison County LEPC in Anderson, Indiana. March 26th and 27th, a Company Officer Development Institute in Fort Wayne, Indiana. March 31, the Community Fire Department in Houston, Texas. As you can see, it's going to be a busy spring for the SA Matters Tour. And for that, I'm very, very thankful. If you're interested in attending an upcoming Situation Awareness Matters Tour stop, head over to SA Matters website and click on the blue box on the right side of the homepage labeled Upcoming Events Schedule. Here's hoping there'll be a tour stop near you and we'll get a chance to meet up. More than 500 agencies on four continents have hosted a Situation Awareness Matters Tour Stop event. Has your agency? No? Please, don't wait until you've had a near miss or a casualty event. Be proactive and get a program scheduled. If you're interested in hosting a Situation Awareness Matters Tour Stop in 2016 for your department or association, contact me through the essaymatters.com website, click on the Contact Us tab, and we'll get something set up for you. Here's a tip on how to host a program at a reduced cost. I schedule many what I call companion programs. These are programs on adjoining days to other programs. So if you see I'm delivering a program within a couple hours of your department and you think you might want to tag along as a companion, contact me. You can save as much as 20% off of the program costs by being a companion to an existing program. Oh, you may recall from the start of the show, this is episode 95. That means we're going to reach another milestone upcoming when we reach episode 100. In the podcasting world, that's a really big deal. Very few podcasters have the tenacity to keep podcasting after just a few episodes. One of the reasons for this is there's very little feedback that comes to the podcaster, so they really don't know if anyone's listening or if anyone's getting any benefit from the show. It is extremely rare for anyone to take the time to go to my website and click on the contact me link and to provide feedback on the podcast show. If you'd like the show, I'd like to hear from you. I do get a lot of feedback during the live events about the podcast, and that drives me to continue to keep the content coming every week. Your feedback really does inspire me to work harder. Really, it does. Thank you for those who've taken the time to send me an email or to post something on my social media feeds. If you want to know where you can find me on social media, visit the SA Matters website, and there you'll see links for Twitter and Facebook and LinkedIn. You can also sign up to receive notifications every time a new blog or podcast is posted. You can also sign up for a free newsletter that I send out each month. Okay, final thing before we jump into the feature segment discussing how peer pressure can impact situational awareness. I want to take a moment to share a message from our sponsor, Midwest Fire, and their president, Sarah Atchison. Hi, I'm Sarah Atchison, owner of Midwest Fire Equipment and Repair. We are proud to sponsor Dr. Gassaway's Situational Awareness Matters podcast. We share passion for saving lives and have been working with firefighters to customize cost-effective, multi-purpose fire trucks since 1987. Our trucks are engineered and built to serve you and your community for decades. We would like to invite you to join our online community. On our social media, we provide you with company updates, trade show appearances, recent deliveries, and fire safety tips to share with your friends and followers. We are on Facebook, LinkedIn, and Twitter. Tweet us at Meadows Fire and let us know you heard us on the podcast. Thank you and enjoy the podcast. Thank you, Sarah Atchison and all the staff at Midwest Fire for your awesome commitment to improving first responder safety. I sincerely appreciate your support of my mission. I would also like to note that Midwest Fire, along with Hail Pumps, sponsored three live tour event stops in Minnesota. Your generous support helped to get this valuable message on firefighter safety to regions that might not otherwise be able to afford or host a tour stop. And it allowed us to provide each attendee with a copy of my newest book, Situational Awareness Matters, Volume 3. So thank you for your support and commitment to safety. And now our feature segment exploring how peer pressure can impact situational awareness. The social interaction between co-workers 
may not be on your mind as you think about first responder situational awareness. But the fact is, we are all influenced by our relationships with others. We have an inherent internal drive to be well-liked and respected. We also have a strong internal drive to avoid embarrassment. These traits of human behavior can impact your situational awareness. First responders spend a lot of time together on calls, in the station, and in many cases in social settings outside of work. All of this interaction builds relationships that allow responders to trust their lives to each other. Blind trust. Trust is important, but blind trust might be dangerous. Blind trust occurs when one person places unwavering trust in another, never questioning the judgment or decision-making of the trusted person. The formation of situational awareness is a result of capturing clues and cues in your environment. This is followed by processing those clues and cues into a coherent understanding of what is happening at the current moment. This in turn is followed by making accurate predictions of future events. It is essential that everyone operating at an emergency scene develop and maintain individual situational awareness based on the process outlined above. If a responder has blind trust in a coworker or a supervisor, that responder may not develop or maintain personal situational awareness because it may be believed that the coworker or the supervisor is better trained or more experienced and therefore will look out for the responder's well-being. In other words, the responder blindly trusts and thus follows the coworker or supervisor's lead. The responder's situational awareness might be poor because the process of forming and maintaining personal situational awareness has been relegated to someone else. Peer pressure. A well-respected co-worker or supervisor may also influence the situational awareness and decision-making of peers and subordinates. When a well-respected co-worker or supervisor makes a decision and gives an order, others may fall in line and comply even if they see things that indicate the decision may be faulty or excessively risky. I remember falling victim of peer pressure when I was a newer firefighter. I lacked the training of many of my peers and I certainly lacked the confidence to speak up. Reflecting back on my career, I can recall numerous occasions where I did whatever I was told because I wanted to be liked and I wanted to fit in. I surely didn't want to be the wimp who stepped up and voiced concerns about my personal safety. Reflecting back, I now see several human behavioral traits were in play for me. First, I had blind trust in my officer. I truly felt he was well-trained and that he would look out for my well-being. Second, I was influenced by peer pressure. I didn't want to risk embarrassing myself by speaking up. I might be wrong, and my officer isn't going to like me questioning his authority. My peers aren't going to like it if I suggest that we take a more conservative approach on the incident. There was simply too much at risk, so I went along with others. Reflecting back, it's ironic. I felt the risk of straining a relationship was more important than the risk to my own life. In other words, I was willing to die to avoid ridicule or embarrassment. In that mindset, I had poorly developed personal situational awareness. My attention wasn't focused on the emergency. My attention was focused on following the lead of my peers and doing whatever they did in the high-risk game of follow the leader. My situational awareness was based on the behavior of my peers and the observations of my officer. If my officer said go, I went. And reflecting back, he seemed to always say go. 
In straining my memory, I can recall only one time we did not go inside a burning structure, and that was because the structure had collapsed prior to our arrival. Survival as a matter of luck. I wonder how often responders find themselves entering situations they feel they should not because of peer pressure. In my book, On Fire About Leadership, I wrote a chapter about how peer pressure can increase risk-taking. I based it on my own personal experiences as a 30-year first responder. I truly believe there are responders who will take excessive risk to avoid ridicule and embarrassment. Why do I believe this? Because I was one of them. And I've had many others tell me that they have found themselves peer pressured into situations and survived only by luck. They were more concerned about avoiding the risk of ridicule and embarrassment. They blindly followed others into untenable situations. I would recommend having a discussion among peers in advance of being put into the situation. Discuss how to stand up to the peer group and how to avoid embarrassment. It seems incomprehensible that someone would risk dying over risking embarrassment. But it happens. If no one speaks up, even though their gut tells them things are not good and the outcome ends up being good, nothing is ever said about it. If no one speaks up and the outcome is bad, the survivors may live a life full of regret for not having spoken up. The consequences are too great to remain silent. Having a discussion in advance sets the stage so when someone speaks up at an emergency scene, everyone understands it is in the interest of everyone's safety. For more on how to speak up, you may want to check out Situational Awareness Matters Volume 1, where I wrote a chapter about the five-step assertive statement process. Discussing this process in advance gives a responder a way to express concern without fear of consequence. Avoid blind trust by ensuring your personal situational awareness is strong based on the clues and cues you capture at the incident and not based on the actions or behaviors or situational awareness of others. If you see peers behaving in a way that are inconsistent with what you feel is safe, have the courage to speak up. Courage is doing the right thing for the right reason at the right time. Courage is not blindly following peers into situations of inappropriate or excessive risk. If you've experienced or witnessed a near miss and would like to have a platform to share your lessons learned with others, please contact me by visiting the essaymatters.com site and clicking on the Contact Us link on the top of the homepage. Think about it for a moment. The lessons learned from your near miss event could save the life of another first responder. But it takes courage to share your lessons. If you want to share your experience, contact me. If you haven't subscribed to SA Matters Radio Podcast yet, please consider taking a moment to go over to iTunes or Stitcher Radio and search for SA Matters Radio, SA Matters Radio, and subscribe. And while you're there, please consider leaving some feedback on the show. I certainly would like it too if you enjoyed the show to give it a five-star review. This really is important to me because it inspires me to work harder for you. A lot of time and effort goes into producing, recording, and editing a show and lining up the guests. And your feedback lets me know that you appreciate the show. In case you haven't heard, I recently released the third book in the Situational Awareness Matters series. This book contains critical lessons for improving situational awareness and high-risk decision-making. If you want a copy, you can get it at SA Matters website or go to Amazon.com. If you know of a business that might be interested in supporting the Situation Awareness Matters mission with a sponsorship, I'm seeking a few select sponsors to help offset the cost of running the website, social media, 
podcast, YouTube channel, the monthly newsletters, and all the other free content. The website has enjoyed over a million visitors, and those visitors have downloaded over 4 million pages of content. We post new blog articles every Friday. Our Situational Awareness Matters newsletter is distributed to thousands of first responders monthly. And the podcast that you're listening to has a new episode that comes out every Tuesday and has been downloaded over over 85,000 times. So if you know of a business that would like to get their message in front of our visitors, subscribers, and supporters, ask them to contact me through the essaymatters.com website contact us link. A huge thank you to Midwest Fire for renewing your commitment to our mission and signing on to be the sponsor of this podcast for a second year. If you're not a member of the SA Matters community of learners, please consider joining. There are over 5,000 members connected here on SA Matters sharing lessons about how to improve situational awareness, how to make better decisions under stress, and how to train members to be critical thinkers and resilient problem solvers. Membership is free, and when you sign up, I'll send you a special report I've created called 25 Best Practices for Improving First Responder Safety. If you're not a member yet, head over to the SA Matters website and click on the red box on the right side of the homepage. It says free membership. If you want to get connected on social media, you can follow me on Twitter, at Rich Gassaway, or at SA Matters, either one, at Rich Gassaway or at SA Matters on Twitter. The SA Matters Twitter community is approaching 17,000 followers of our mission, and thanks for those who are along on the ride on Twitter. You can also get connected on Facebook by joining our private SA Matters Facebook page. It's free also, and to do that, go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash SA Matters. Here's an enticement to join the private Facebook group. I posted a coupon in there for 50% off on the new book. That'll save you 20 bucks. On LinkedIn, you can also find me at Rich Gassaway. Or I'm sorry, not at, just Rich Gassaway on LinkedIn. Well, that's it. Episode 95 is complete. Thank you to our podcast sponsor, Midwest Fire. Thank you to all of our live event hosts. And thank you, our listeners, for sharing some of your valuable time with me today. I really appreciate your support of the SA Matters mission. Be safe out there, and may the peace of the Lord and strong situational awareness be with you always. You've been listening to the Situational Awareness Matters radio show with Dr. Richard B. Gassaway. If you are interested in learning more about situational awareness, human factors, and decision-making under stress, visit samatters.com. If you are interested in booking Dr. Gassaway for an upcoming event, visit his personal website at richgassaway.com.